let's see, what do we have here? So n plus two n cubed. So what do I multiply n by to get n cubed? Would be n squared. And n squared times two is two n squared. Uh, what do I add to two n squared to get five n squared? Um, three n squared. And then what do I multiply n by to get three n squared would be three n. Yeah. And three n times two is six n. And what do I add to six n to get 11 n? Um, five n. And then I'm going to multiply by five to get five n. And five times two is 10. And what do I add to 10 to get 10? Zero. So here's my answer right here. Beautiful. Okay. Um, next one. Same similar thing. M plus 8. And I have a 3m to the 4th. So what do I multiply m by to get 3m to the 4th? 3m cubed. And 3m cubed times 8 is 24m cubed. Okay. What do I add to 24m cubed to get 22m? Negative 2m cubed. So I'm going to multiply by negative 2m squared. Yeah, that's right. And that should be n times 8 is negative 16m squared. Um, and then I need a negative 8m squared, so I'm going to add 8m squared. Uh, so I'm going to multiply by 8m times m gives me 8m squared. And 8m times 8 is 64m. Lovely. And what do I add to 64m to get 71m? Um, um, seven, 7. 7m. <laughs> and 7 times 8 is 56. And then I add 0. So here's my answer. Questions? Asia. Okay, so now we're going to move on. Interesting. To something new. Not really. You guys have done it a bazillion times. Um, but we're really going to talk about properties of exponents. So we have a few definitions here for you. Um, exponents are also called powers or indices. Um, just a few little definitions. The three big ideas of exponents. The exponent says how many times to use uh, the number in multiplication, right? So if I have like three to the fourth power, this means I'm going to multiply three times three times three times three, right? So that's... Uh, the um, how many times I'm going to multiply by here. Um, a negative exponent means divide because the opposite of multiplying is dividing. Um, and a fractional exponent like 1 over n means take the nth root. Um, so here's one of my properties, x to the 1 over n equals the nth root of x. And we're going to go over that, um, if not later today, uh, a whole couple lessons about that. Okay. So, um, the big ideas of exponents. So, here's our laws of exponents. I know that you've seen them, like, probably since, I don't know, ninth grade, if not eighth grade, right? We've done exponents every year. Okay, so, um, x to the first power equals x, right? Anything, if it doesn't have an exponent, it's to the first power. Um, x to the zeroth power is 1, and we're going to talk about that in a minute and why it's 1. Um, x to the negative first power is 1 over x. Um, if I multiply the exponents and they have the same base, I uh, basically I'm going to end up adding the exponents together. If it's division, I end up subtracting them. 
a power to a power means I multiply them. Um, I can distribute the exponent through, both through multiplication and division. And then we have our fractional exponents, and we're going to talk about those not today. Okay? Fractional exponents we'll talk about on, on a whole separate day by itself. So I know I went over those really fast, but I um, will talk about those more in depth as we go along. So uh, right now we're going to talk about x to the first, x to the zero, x to the negative one, and x to the negative n all at the same time as we fill out these uh, little tables. And it kind of explains why some things work and some things don't. Okay. So um, I have a function that says y equals 2 to the x power. I just need to choose some values for x and plug them in. That's what we're going to do. So um, I think that I'm going to choose, let's see how many values do I have. One, two, three. Uh, three, two, one, zero. Yeah, let's start at three, two, one, zero, negative one, and negative two. Those work for me. Remember, I just plugged, I just picked those values. It doesn't matter. It could have been any values. I just wanted some positive and some negative, and I want them to go in a row so we can see what the pattern is. Okay? So what is two to the third power? Eight, good. And what's two to the second power? And two to the first power? Two. So I'm going to stop here, and we're going to kind of look at the pattern here. What's happening here every time? Just on the table. If I look between eight, four, and two, what's, what am I doing every time? I'm dividing by two, right? Dividing by two. So hopefully... Hopefully the pattern continues, right? It's, it should. So the next step means I would also divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And that's why anything to the 0th power is 1. Even if it was 3, if I was doing 3 to the x or 4 to the x or a million to the x, this number would be whatever's here in this spot right here would be whatever that number is. And then I'm dividing by that number, so I always get 1. So anything to the 0th power is always 1. It kind of makes sense now. Instead so of somebody just saying, oh, it's one, that's just the rule. This is why. There's a reason why it's one, because it's the same number divided by the same number, so it's always one. Okay? And then, um, again, I'm still following the same pattern, right? So I'm dividing by two again. Oh, that's not a two. Divide by two. Um, so one divided by two happens to be one half. So x to the negative one is one half, which I can actually... Um, let me rewrite this just a little bit. I'm so sorry. I want to move that over a little bit. So this is one half, which I can write as one over two to the first power, right? So this is just, um, let's do this one more time. And then if I divide by two again, um, I'm going to get one four or one over two squared. So basically what a negative number does, it just tells me it's in the wrong I like to say it's in the wrong place. It's not home. It's, it, it needs to go. It's so stupid. It's unhappy, so it wants to go home. So if it, home is not in the bottom, it's in the top. If it's not in the top, it's in the bottom. So if it's got a negative exponent, it just wants to go home. And then it becomes positive, right? So here it was in my numerator. It wants to go to the denominator. And then it just becomes a regular exponent. That kind of helps you think about negative exponents that way. I find it kind of helped me a little bit when I was first learning them. Um, same thing if we do this table, which is one-third to the x. I'm going to choose the same values. 3, 2, 1, 0, if I can remember what I'm writing. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose the same values, right? So what would one-third to the third power be? Ooh. Anybody? One third to the third power. Not one eighteenth. One twenty seventh. There we go. Three times three times three, right? Okay. And then one third to the half. Oh, second power. Woo. One ninth. One ninth. Good. And um, one third to the first power is. One third. And so what's happening this time instead of, 
instead of dividing by three, I am multiplying by three. Because it's going from super small to getting bigger. So I'm multiplying this time. So I'm multiplying by three. So again, I'm going to multiply by three. One third times three is one. It also works with fractions. So I will always get a one there. Okay? So no matter what, it's uh, anything to the zeroth power is one. And then again, one third to the negative one power, I'm multiplying by three again. So one times three is three. And I can write that as um, three to the first power, right? Ugh. Okay. And then times three again is nine, which would be three squared. Again, I kind of talk about it not being happy, right? It's in the, it's in the um, bottom, the, 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 the denominator, and it's not happy, so it needs to go to the, deno uh, the numerator. So if it's in the bottom and it's got a negative exponent, it goes to the top. And if it's in the top and it's got a negative, a negative uh, exponent, it goes to the bottom. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so it just switches places, and the exponent stays positive. It doesn't make my number negative. It just means it needs to go to the opposite place of where it's at. Okay? All right, so now we're just going to kind of do some of these problems, see if we can figure out what they are. Um, so m to the negative 2. Well, I've got a negative exponent, so that means my um, it needs to go to the denominator. And by the way, the exponents only affect what, should, what they're touching, right? So it only affects what they're touching. So you've got to remember that. So it's touching the m, so this is going to be 1 over m squared because the whole thing moves. And then if I'm looking at the number 2 one, again, I've got a negative exponent. So this is in the numerator, so it's going to go to the denominator. So this should be written as um, 1 over negative 3 squared, which I can write as 1 ninth. Positive 9, right? All right, so you guys take a couple seconds and do A and B. Um, so here's my exponent. It's in the denominator, so I'm going to move it to the numerator, which means I'm going to have 10 to the third power, or I think it's 1,000. Yeah, 1,000. That's good. And then B is a little more trickier because the only thing with the negative exponent is the x, so it's going to go to the denominator, so this becomes 9, that stays, that didn't have a negative exponent, the 9 stays where it's at, and the only thing that moves is the x to the fourth power. Is there questions on that one? Nice job, JD. Okay, so remember, exponents only affect what they're touching. If the 9, if it wanted to touch the 9, then it would be in parentheses. Okay? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, awesome. Next, um, so instead of really talking about the examples, I just kind of wrote one out. Usually I, usually I talk through it and I write these out, right? But you guys have, should have already, um, we kind of already taught this a bazillion times, right? Uh, a to the nth times a to the nth is a to the m plus n, so I'm adding my exponents. Why? Because x squared times x cubed is x times x times x times x times x, which is x to the fifth, right? I'm just adding my exponents together. So does that make sense? Hey, Suze, your eyes went narrow and you were like, we okay? Okay. <laughs> so if I write it out, it's, it, that's how many x's I have, right? So same thing. But, but the important thing is they have to have the same, this part, oh, that's not it. This part has to be the same, right? So on this one, I've got... 3 to the 8 plus 9, which is 3 to the 17th. I'm not going to make you figure out what that is. It's probably some, um, they probably, it's probably so big your calculator gives you a scientific number on it. So. And then the second one. If it's just numbers, I'm just going to multiply them together, right? I, it doesn't matter what order I multiply things in, so I can rewrite this as negative 4 times 6 times m to the 7th times m squared. 
Now that gives me negative 24 m to the ninth. Questions? We okay with that? Not too bad? Or it is bad? It's not bad yet. Okay. <laughs> All right, so try A and B. What you're saying. Okay, A. Um, I'm going to multiply the numbers together, so I should get 20x to the seventh. Yeah, I'm going to check myself with JJ, make sure I'm right. Good job. And then B, I only have, oh, variable. So M to the eighth and N to the third. And then P to the zeroth power is one, so I don't even have to have that one. So I'm done with that. Questions? Did you forget P to the zeroth power was one? Okay. All right, on to the next one. It's pretty much the same thing, only it's subtraction. Um, it's division, so instead of adding my exponents, I'm going to subtract them. I have two different examples because um, one has the higher exponent in the numerator, and then one has the higher exponent in the denominator. And so this is how I kind of think about it. If the higher exponent is in the numerator, my variable is going to end up in the numerator. If my bigger exponent is in the denominator, it's going to end up in the denominator. Okay, does that make sense? So notice I have, um, I can cross the, oh. Let's uh, try and get a pen. So I can cross these off, right? And I have four X's left in the top. If I do it on this one, my Y's are left in the denominator. So that's, I just, in my mind, I'm just like, okay, so I'm going to subtract from the, if, my bigger number's at the top, I'm going to subtract from the top. My bigger number's in the bottom, I'm going to subtract from the bottom. And I also mean negatives are included in there, by the way. So if I have two negative exponents, I will subtract from whichever number's biggest. So if negative one is in my numerator, um, then that's where my biggest exponent is, okay? And I may have some examples coming up later like that. I don't know. Okay, so... Once again, um, we're going to take care of the numbers first. So 8 divided by 24 is 3. And then my biggest exponent is in the top, so I'm going to have t to the 9 minus 3. So that would be 3t to the 6. Or I could just go like this. I usually just do it here. All three of those go away, and I have 6 left here. Okay? Okay. So either way that you want to do it is great. So if I go to number two, I've got a little bit more. Um, oh, both of them are, both of the bigger ones are in the numerator. Such a good example. Okay, so eight goes into 32 four times. I have two X's in the bottom and eight in the top. So that means there's going to be six left in the top, one in the bottom and five in the top. That means there's going to be four left in the top. So my answer should be four X to the sixth, Y to the fourth. Any questions? Please let me know if you do have questions. We'll try my utmost to explain it better to you if you do. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and... Uh, so I can look at this, oh, this problem a couple different ways. I can do this as um, y to the 4 minus a negative 5, which is equal to 4 to the ninth. Or I could say, okay, this is a negative exponent. It needs to move. So I get, um, let me change this, y to the 4 times y to the 5th, which also equals y to the ninth. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to look at it. Um, it works either way. Does that make sense? So either way you want to look at it, either whichever way makes your more sense in your brain, you can do it either way. Okay? Um, number 20. Why are all the exponents? Oh, I definitely need to revamp this. Okay. So um, 
negative 4 goes into negative 20 five times. So I can write this as 5 times x to the 8 minus 2, y to the 5 minus 2, and z to the 3 minus 1, which is going to be 5x to the 6th, y to the 3rd, z squared. There's really no other way to do that one. I mean, you could write them all out and then cross them off if you really wanted to. Um, all the X's and Y's and Z's out and then cross off and see what's left. But uh, however you wanted to do that. Okay. Um, okay, that's it on that page. All right, so now we have a couple others. We've talked about these all the same because basically they're the same same, um, very similar to each other. They're not the same. They're very similar. So the first one's called a power to a power, a to the nth to the nth. That's like saying I have x squared cubed, which is x squared times x squared times x squared, which is x to the sixth, right? Um, so, and then a, b to the nth is, a. Uh, my example is x, x, y cubed, which is x, y times x, y times x, y. Then I rearrange my x's and my y's, and I get x cubed, y cubed. And that same example um, goes if it's a, a, a fraction also, that this exponent here gets distributed through. This is exponent gets distributed through. And it gets distributed through everything that's in the parentheses, whether it's a number or a variable, it gets distributed to, or a negative sign, it gets distributed to everything, okay? Um, so, oh good, we have a couple examples that are better than the last examples, okay? So, pretty easy, the first one. Wow, I could have done a better job of picking examples. Okay, so this is um, a cubed times a cubed, which is a to the sixth, or just multiply two times three, three times two together and still get a to the sixth. And this one, I'm going to distribute this through. So I get m to the two times three is six, n to the negative three over four to the third. And then usually they don't like negative exponents, so this negative needs to be moved. So my real answer is going to be m to the 6th over 64 and cubed. That's right, right, 64? Okay. So I did that in my head, so I hope that's right. Hunter says it's right, so it has to be right. So let's have you guys go ahead and do A and B. You know, usually I have granola bars, but there hasn't been enough kids in class to go buy granola bars. Huh? That's some I agree. Um, so if I multiply these together, negative 8 times negative 5 would be t to the 40th power. Eh. Um, for B, I'm just going to take this 3 and I'm going to distribute it to everything. Um, so I have negative 5 to the 3rd power, A to the 3rd power, and B to the 3rd power. And negative 5 to the 3rd power is negative 125 A cubed, B cubed. Okay, so now we're getting even a little harder. Notice the problems are getting bigger, right? More complicated. So that's how it works, unfortunately. So fun. So um, I'm going to take this exponent, and it's going to get distributed to everything. Well, okay, let's start here. There's two, there's two, two schools of thought. I can either take, the, take what's inside my parenthesis and simplify it first, or I can distribute the exponent through first and then simplify. Doesn't matter, okay? You can do it either way. I can either simplify first and then distribute the exponent through, 
or I can distribute the exponent through and then simplify. Doesn't matter. Sometimes I do one one way and then I do the next one the next way. It just depends on the problem and how complicated I think it is. On this one, I think I'm just gonna distribute this through to everything and it's gonna go through to all five things. So two to the third power is eight, x to the ninth, y to the negative sixth, all over 27, y to the negative nine. Okay, so this is a negative, they're both negative exponents, but this one's bigger, right? So I'm gonna subtract this one from that one, and I should get eight, x to the ninth, y to the third. Yes, yes, that is correct. All over 27. Thanks, Hunter. I'm having problems with math this week, so thanks for helping me. That's why I keep checking JJ's work to make sure I have the same answer as him. Okay, I think on um, number two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it first uh, before, I, um, before I distribute the exponent through. So um, two goes into six three times and into eight four times. And then my bigger exponent is on the top. So negative two minus a minus four is positive two. And then this is one. So I'm going to rewrite this. Should be 3a squared b to the 6th all over 4. And that's all to the negative 2. So now I'm going to distribute that through. Um, and I'm going to get 3 to the negative 2, a to the negative 2, b to the negative... Oh, not negative 2. So sorry. Negative 4... b to the negative 12 all over 4 to the negative 2. Now, they all have negatives, so they're going to switch, right? Whatever's in the top is going to go to the bottom, and whatever's in the bottom is going to go to the top, right? So we don't have any more negative exponents. So 4 squared is 16 over 9, a to the 4th, b to the 12th. There's many paths you can take to get to this right answer, okay? Because I could have flipped this first and then simplified because it's a negative exponent. I mean, there's lots of things you could have done to get to the same answer. Lots of different ways to get there. So if you did it a different way than I did, it's totally fine as long as the end product is the right part. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've got A and B here. Are we at the bottom of the page? Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to distribute this through. So I get uh, 3 squared is tw 27. X to the 6 times 2X to the negative 4 all over X to the 8th. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to do the top first, I guess. So 2 times 27 is 54. X to the squared all over x to the eighth. Um, so that's going to be 54. My biggest exponent's on the bottom this time. So x to the sixth. Is that right? Oh, good. Whew, okay. Um, second one. Distribute the two through. I got to I got to get rid of my exponent before I can simplify. So 25 a to the sixth b squared all over 10 a squared b. Now I can simplify. Um, five goes into 25 five times. And then a to the fourth and b all over two.
Questions? We're doing okay. Hey, we're doing great on time today, too. Last page, I think. Oh, last three questions. They're for you guys, too. Good job. Oh. I don't know. I miss my kids. I miss you guys being here, though. I miss the interactions. So, the making fun of Hunter. I've been doing that for two years now, Hunter. Six goes into 24 four times and into one one time. I mean, into six one time. So, on the, t let's see. So, um, trying to decide the best way to do this for you guys. Um, I'm going to do it this way. X to the negative 2 minus a negative 5. And then it's going to be Z to the 8 minus a negative 3. All over 6 to the Y, y to the 6 minus 4. So I've got X to the 3, Z to the 8, 9, 10, 11 over 6 Y squared. Yes? Is that what you got? Huh? Oh, 4. Thank you. 4 Y squared. I don't know where the 6 came from. Oh, because I was dividing by 6. 4 Y squared. Okay. And then the when... Hunter didn't have, had problems with. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the inside first. So negative 4, x to the 5th, um, y to the 6th, to the negative 4. And now I'm going to flip it. Before I distribute, I'm going to flip them. So this becomes y to the 6th over negative 4x to the 5th, all to the 4th power. And then I get y to the 24. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, and 16 times 16 is 256. Where did your 5 go? x to, oh, sorry, there should, there should be a 5, huh? Um, 5 to the 4th is 625. Thank you. Um, x to the 20th. It just disappeared into the math black hole. I told you I was doing really bad math this week. That's okay. <laughs> We're doing basic trig next period, and I've been having so much trouble entering stuff into the calculator. It's been really bad. And the last one, I'm going to do the same way I just did that one. Um, so I'm going to try not to forget my five though. So this is going to be five X squared over two Y to the 11th, all to the negative two. And then with the negative, I'm going to switch them first. So that's two Y to the 11th over five X squared, all squared. So that should be four Y to the 22nd. 22nd, all over 25x to the 4th. Boom. Done. Finished. Question. I don't think your homework has problems this bad, th that big in Delta math. That's good. Okay. I don't think, it's been a while since I've looked at it though, Hunter. Like two months or so, you know. So, um. So you have to